Have you ever wondered what is the difference between PWM and MPPT charge controllers? Well, here in this video, I've actually got two charge controllers from the same brand, Batteria Power. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be comparing their PWM charge controller to their MPPT. I've actually, in this video, devised a real-world test where I basically connected up my bifacial 200-watt solar panel to the PWM charge controller. And then straight after, I then tested it with the exact same positioning the MPPT charge controller. And this allowed me to really see the benefits of using an MPPT charge controller, but at the same time, it allowed me to see the benefits of also using the PWM, depending on what kind of setup you want to use. And not only are we going to be comparing these two charge controllers, we're going to also be reviewing both of these charge controllers. And I'll go through some of the things I like, some of the things I'd like to see improved. Definitely watch through to the end, like and subscribe, and let's get started with the comparison. Now let's quickly list off some of the main features that you'll see between both of these charge controllers because these do share a lot in common, especially when it comes to their construction, but obviously the internals are a little bit different. So one of the main benefits about using these charge controllers is that they are plug and play. So literally as the name implies, when we say plug and play, it really is as simple as just plugging in your cable and then you're ready to go. I will get into some of the nuances with the MPPT charge controller because it does use SAE connectors, but definitely when it comes to the PWM, it really is plug and play. You just plug in on the Anderson poles, plug in your battery, and then you plug in your PV panels on the other end, the solar panels with the MC4 plugs, and you're ready to go. Like that's one of the big benefits. Another thing is thanks to the design of the enclosed ABS plastic, I assume that they're using to keep all of the internals safe. They are actually completely waterproof. So as far as I can see, these are completely sealed and waterproof. From what I've researched so far, it actually does do a pretty good job of keeping itself cool. As long as you keep these in the shade and you don't obviously leave them in the sun, they actually do a pretty decent job of keeping themselves cool, which is quite surprising. So as you can see, the main benefit of these charge controllers is that they are way smaller than using like these bigger 40 to 60 amp charge controllers. These are really quite compact and very portable. So if you're using a small setup or you're wanting to save space in your RV or something like that, these are definitely charge controllers that you will want to have a look at. And then another big benefit which both of these charge controllers share is that they have like eight levels of protection. So they've got overcharge protection, over temperature protection, over voltage protection, over current protection, overload protection, short circuit protection, reverse polarity protection, which I did test and it actually does work, and also over discharge protection. So there's plenty of different protections inside to protect the system from any mishaps. For example, reverse polarity, which is very common with using SAE connectors. These charge controllers do support different battery chemistries so you can set it to charge for gel batteries AGM or lithium ion phosphate which is the one we'll be using for this video so in order to change the different battery chemistries it's quite simple you can either do it via the bluetooth app because they do have a bluetooth version and they do have a non-bluetooth version of these charge controllers both of these are the bluetooth model so if you don't have the bluetooth model it's actually quite simple you all you have to do is you just set and enter so you press the set and enter button you hold it down and then it's going to start flashing on one of the battery chemistries you select whichever one you want you just cycle through and you select whichever one you want we'll be using lithium ion phosphate and then if you want to set the voltage the next display if you look at the display it will show 12 or you press the button again you can get 24 so these charge controllers can charge 12 volt or 24 volt batteries we'll be using 12 volt for this test and then you press and set and hold and then that'll register your changes now that pretty much covers most of the features which both of these charge controllers share between each other i feel it'd be worth mentioning what is my intention for using these charge controllers now personally i've got a 12 volt 100 amp hour battery which i've got available and i want to use it for all of my dc current i've already got two diy solar systems so this one is just going to be a third but as a separate system for running all of my DC current and the other two are used with some inverters and with different separate solar panels and charge controllers and they run all of my AC appliances with a few DC appliances sometimes. So when it came to connecting up the PWM charge controller to the flexible mono panel I was getting 73 watts when I connected up the EcoWorthy panel to the Batteria PWM charge controller. 
Before connecting your solar panel to your charge controller, just keep in mind that you want to have a look at the maximum VOC, the open circuit voltage that the solar charge controller can handle. So the VOC is usually located on the back of the panel on a sticker. You can refer to the user manual, which is located in the box, what the maximum voltage can be accepted for these solar charge controllers. And then when I connected up their MPVT charge controller, I was getting 83 watts. So that's a 13% increase of power just by using the MPPT charge controller. Then when we step up the voltage, so we went up to a bigger panel. So I was using the bifacial 200 watt panel from Bouge RV. And then when I connected up the battery uh, PWM charge controller, I was getting a reading of 132 watts. And then when I connected up their MPPT charge controller, I was getting 161 watts. So that's about a 20 to 22% increase of power just via using the MPPT charge controller. As you can see via this test, this real world test, PWM basically just cut the voltage down to the charging voltage necessary to charge your battery. So you're definitely going to get a more efficient system if you're wanting to use many different panels and many different voltages and higher voltages. The MPPT charge controller is going to give you a higher efficiency. I should probably mention though that if you're using a slightly different battery, maybe a 24 volt battery paired up with the 30 volt panel for example, I think that the conversion losses would be much more minimal and a PWM could be quite effective in that scenario. But honestly, that would be the real best case scenario for a PWM charge controller. I think for most people, if you want the most efficient system and the most flexibility, definitely go for the MPPT charge controller. Now, it is important to probably consider, though, that there is a price difference between PWM and MPPT charge controllers at the moment. So when you're going for a PWM charge controller, sometimes they can be 30 to 40% cheaper, especially when we're looking at the battery PWM non-Bluetooth charge controller. You can see that there's quite a big difference in price. So it will be around $35 to $37 or so for the non-Bluetooth one. And then if you go for the non-Bluetooth MPPT charge controller, you can see that it would be around 67 to 70 US dollars. So that would be, it's about a 45 to 50% increase in price if you go for the MPPT charge controller. Something I did notice is that later on in the day when I tested out my MPPT charge controller with the bifacial panel, I did get a maximum wattage of 187 to 190 watts coming in via the MPPT charge controller. So you can imagine that if we were to compare that to the PWM charge controller, you'd start to see even larger efficiency out of the MPPT charge controller. In terms of maximum amperage that these charge controllers can handle, the MPPT charge controller can handle up to 20 amps and the PWM charge controller has a claimed rating up to 30 amps. Now, the highest amperage that I got out of the MPPT charge controller was about 14 amps when I was getting that peak performance of about 190 watts and it handled it just fine. But personally, I wouldn't be running these charge controllers at their absolute maximum that they can handle, especially the 30 amps, because just keep in mind that these cables are just 12 American wire gauge. So personally, I wouldn't run the PWM charge controller at absolute maximum. That's just me personally. I would probably run it at around 20 to 25 amps absolute max. When you're using the MPPT charge controller from Battery of Power, it does come with some accessory cables in the box, which is designed so that you can choose what plugs you'd like to use with this MPPT charge controller. Because on the MPPT charge controller, it's using SAE plugs. Now, personally, I would just recommend changing those out to MC4 plugs or Anderson pole plugs, literally whatever other standard you'd like to use. So fortunately within the box, they do include an accessory cable so that you can then create your own custom cable on the input and the output. And it does come with a reverse polarity corrector because sometimes that happens. SAE connectors can sometimes be on reverse polarities. Inside the box, there is a little document that shows you correct wiring. Whenever you're wanting to wire up your own plugs, make sure you follow the wire diagram to figure out 
which line is positive and which line is negative. Otherwise, the device won't bring in any power. Luckily, there is reverse polarity protection, which I did try out and it does actually work. I did that on the battery and actually didn't bring in any power, which is fortunate. And then whenever you're wanting to connect up the line going from the output terminal on a charge controller to your battery, definitely try and use an inline fuse that protects your system, that protects your cables. Definitely try and get one of those if you can. Have a look at the accessory page on Battery of Power's website, or you can head over to AliExpress or Amazon. I'll try and leave some links down below if I find any accessory cables, because you will need some. If you don't want to create your own custom plugs on the ends of these cables, you will need to get some custom cables in order to connect up either your battery to the charge controller, or your panel to these charge controllers. So just have a look at those. I'll have some links down below. I would like to see a version of one of these charge controllers in the future, which would have MC4 plugs built onto the charge controller. Have a look at those affiliate links down below if you're interested in these products. For the next video, if you're starting to get into DIY Solar, I would definitely recommend having a look at my DIY Solar for beginners video. I'll try and update you in the comments how these charge controllers fare over time. But that's it for now. Like and subscribe and I hope to see you in a future video.